Welcome to the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast with psychologist Dr. Doreen Downing. Listen in as Doreen interviews people who felt they didn't have a voice or who suffered extreme speaking anxiety. You'll hear stories about how they struggled to speak up, what they did to find their authentic voice, and the confidence they now feel to speak up and make an impact. If you want to get started right away to find your voice, download Doreen's free 7-Step Guide to Fearless Speaking at Doreen7Steps.com. And now, here is Doreen. Hi, this is Dr. Doreen Downing, and I am with the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast. And here I give people the opportunity to talk about how at some point in their life they came to realize that they didn't have a voice whether it was because of some family trauma, some kind of experience at school, or just society, waking up who we really are authentically in society sometimes can be a challenge. (laughs) And today I have a friend of mine, Tom Ruwich. And first I'd like to just say a couple of things about him before we give him the floor. Tom is the founder and president of Story Power Marketing. Coaches, consultants, and thought leaders choose Tom to harness the power of storytelling so they can captivate prospects and inspire them to buy. Storytelling, Tom. Wow. Is there anything else you'd like to add to that intro? I, I think that says it all. I'm very happy to be here and uh, we'll, we'll add more as we go along, but uh, I think that's a good introduction to what I do and why I'm here. Great. I'm, I'm sure that we're all interested in hearing how you came to be who you are and what you offer as a story, story power marketing person. But so let's start though, if we can, and I know it, sometimes it's uh, it's a little vulnerable to go back in your early life and talk about a time or maybe you have a story about what it was like and when you didn't have a voice. Yeah, I, the way I like to put it is when I was first getting started in business, I was a feeble storyteller. And uh, that's another way for me to say, I didn't have a voice because what I, I really was driven by a very formulaic and very tactic driven approach to business and sales. I was an entrepreneur. I was, I had started and was growing a software business, email marketing software. And I was driven by the by the same old routine that the more you hustle and the more that the knock on every door on every floor, I literally still have a pair of shoes with, with holes that I burned in the soles from uh, running around town. I, my throat was raw from cold calling. And at the time I thought I had a voice, but what I really came to recognize was that I didn't, that I was just, sort of barging around town, pitching product descriptions that, yeah, we had worked those up and they came from the minds of our people, but I wasn't being authentic and communicative and connecting with people. I was simply knocking on every door and every floor, cold calling until my throat was raw, burning holes into the shoe leather and it was tiring and it was frustrating and it wasn't fulfilling it wasn't fun and what i've come to realize is that's a pretty typical routine for a lot of people who are trying to sell their products and services yes you said communicative and connected and i want to talk about that in a moment but before i go there uh, is there I mean, I get the sense of you being a young man and entering the work world and uh, having a sense of what that should look like and, you know, putting on the jacket and the shoes and, uh, <laughs> you know, moving forward in your life and making a, a business. Do you have a sense of earlier in life, was that kind of a message that you got from your 
parents, your father, was he a businessman? I mean, how did you come to see, well, this is who I should be? Yeah, I mean, my my father was a businessman and, and uh, I knew a lot of successful business people and there was a certain ethic that I witnessed and that I grew up with where um, it was about hustle and hard work. And, and these are virtuous things, don't get me wrong, but so much of the, the business and sales methodology that I learned was rooted in that, in that one idea, hustle, 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 hard work, hard work, hard work. And again, virtuous things, but those were not necessarily things that fostered the kind of connection building and the kind of find your voice building that I've come to realize are, are really much more important. Yes, and in our society, I'm thinking about you as a young boy and you going to school with mm -hmm. um, some kind of uh, sense of hustle, as you're saying, mm -hmm. but isn't that amazing how young we get that message to show up and uh, prove ourselves and to make something out of whatever it is that you've got to produce as schoolwork. Any yeah. memories you have uh, going to school? Memories of, of, of school? Well, it, and hustling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the principles, the principles were, were similar to a certain extent that, that, um, the, the schools that I went to were very sink or swim. You didn't, you, you didn't want to demonstrate or express any sense of vulnerability. Uh, I think for young men, especially, uh, versus young women, the idea that, uh, you soldier through it and you just keep pushing and the harder you push and the harder you work and the more hours you put in, uh, the better you'll do. And to a certain extent, we're, we're taught and we're programmed not to lean into others, not to rely on resources. We're taught to, uh, that, that flying alone is a virtue. Um, and I've come to realize and, and recognize that flying alone is, is just plain stupid. <laughs> um, and uh, that, that what we really need to do is be able to express our vulnerability, be, be, a, be able to build human connections with people, lean into those who can help us provide help to others, uh, um, seek those who, who are empathetic and be empathetic with others so that you can build those bonds and those connections. And those are the things that ultimately feed business success and sales success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you obviously, from what you're saying now, have learned something. Mm -hmm. So it's been a journey. And yeah. I get that early on, you were kind of programmed, you might say, to be the, the achiever, the high achiever, and the one who is trying to make something happen in the ways that you were taught. But it does seem like you, you came to some kind of realization. There, there must have been something that went, aha, this isn't who I am really. So is there a story about one day? <laughs> there is, there's always a good story. And uh, the story I will tell is about uh, my email marketing software, uh, Called, the company was called MarketVolt. We sold it about a year and a half ago. But uh, MarketVolt had a VP of sales named Pat Hahn. And Pat came back from a sales call one day and told me this story. He had met with a prospect named Jane. Jane was responsible for creating the emails that were being sent out on behalf of a team of sales reps at this manufacturing company. And Jane hated her job, just hated it. It was a hassle. She had to make, take the same email copy and copy it multiple times over to deliver it on, under the name of each separate sales rep. And 
she just she found it miserable she dreaded it 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 was painful for her and pat in the course of walking her through some of the things that market Volt could do revealed to her a, a way of doing email marketing that really instantly she recognized would transform her life and and i don't say that lightly when i say transform her life but it it was true because she recognized immediately that this thing that she hated to do that she dreaded that literally gave her a headache would would now be something that she could look forward to that was easier that took less time that uh would would be almost fun for her and she was so fired up by this that she literally jumped into pat's arms gave him a bear hug tear streaming down her cheek and this was just a, I've just told you a story about software, but really it's not a story about software. It's a story about a human being and a human being whose life was transformed. And when Pat told me that story, it, it just lit a light bulb for me that, that we were spending so much time doing that hard charging, hustle, hustle, hustle kind of sales pitch that we weren't taking the time to really dive deep and understand the human beings whom we were serving and the transformations that we were enabling. And that story really brought home for me that what we were doing was not selling software, but what we were doing was transforming lives and when i recognized that it it immediately transformed the way that i talked about the business from hard charging knock on every door on every floor cold call till my throat was raw sales pitching to storytelling telling stories about my prospects and the transformations that they experience or that they desire to experience. And it felt immediately so honest and so accurate and so authentic, so rooted in human connection and empathy that for me, it was a transformation because now I realized the things that I was talking about, the stories that I, were t I was telling, were real, were meaningful for me, and were more meaningful for prospects. No longer was it a numbers game for me. Well, yeah, I, I knock on enough doors, 90 people say no, but if I knock on 100 enough times, I'll get 10 yeses, 10 yeses, 10 yeses, and I'll fill the bucket. That was not fulfilling for me. Mm -hmm. Connecting with fewer people in an authentic way where my voice was resonating for me and felt authentic for me and felt authentic and was authentic to my clients. That transformed my life, my business, gave me the voice that I wanted and really uh, transformed what I do for a living. So the, the story about Pat, who <laughs> talked about a real conversation and connection with somebody, then said to you, woke you up to being able to say, oh, I get it. I really want to have relationship be what my business is about. And that relationship happens when you can be more authentic, more real, more show up in a more vulnerable way. And story feels like what we're talking about, not feels like, it is what we're talking about, but that's yeah. the change. And to have your voice be able to go yes to story. So say a little bit more about storytelling and just your approach to what you've learned about storytelling and what you can share with us today. Sure, so I'll, I'll start by talking to you about what story isn't because, and, and here's sort of a common story that I experience. I will connect with people who hear that I help them with stories and they will tell me, well, I don't have a 
interesting story to tell. I'm not interesting. I there's I don't want to talk about myself. And my response is number one, everyone has an interesting story. So I I, you're you're going to find your interesting story, but go ahead and put that aside for the moment, because really it's not about you. It's not about it's not a story about you. It's a story about your prospects and your customers and everyone with whom you're trying to connect to whom you're trying to sell. Everyone has a story, and. That story is about before to after. Where are they now? What is it that they're going through? What are their problems? What are their fears and frustrations? And where is it that they want to go? We don't wallow in the fear or the frustration or the or anger or whatever the emotion may be, but we acknowledge it we empathize, and then we take people by the hand and we lead them to wherever it is they want to go. And that journey from before to after is the story. And the more that you can understand where your prospects wish to go, what journey they wish to take, then the better you are able to captivate them to attract their attention, to get them to lean in. So they will say, tell me more. And then you can tell them how your product and your service is the bridge that will help take them on that journey. So with Jane, the prospect that we discussed, we were able to evoke for her a journey from time wasted to time saved, from frustration to relief from dread to something I look forward to. And when I would tell that story with that emotional journey to prospects after I had that epiphany, so many people would lean in and say, okay, tell me how that, how is this going to happen? And what they've done then is invited me to tell them about our software. They want to know about the software because I've sold them on the journey, the story. The story is what we sell. The software, the product, the service, whatever it is we sell, whatever it is you sell, that is the means to the end, not the end all, not the thing you're selling. In watching you, I don't know if people will be able to go to the uh, my playlist and watch you speak about how how you are showing up right now when you smile about the excitement that you have <laughs> yeah. about helping people. And I also got that as a coach, what you do is to help people find their voice. Like you said, they start out, I don't have a story. And then you went, yes, you do. And this kind of welcoming and permitting them to uh, be able to find their voice. So in a way, I feel like you help people find their voice. You help them find their story. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think this is a place where you and I have connected, Doreen. We, we in many ways, say a similar thing to our audiences. We're trying to encourage them to remind them that it is within you, that you just have to discover ways to let it out and to, to find it. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of mindset work in what you do and in what in what I do. Uh, I think that when it comes to marketing, especially storytelling for the sake of selling, a lot there's a lot of resistance. I mentioned before that you begin by wanting to discover where your prospects are. And most people, when they are shopping for a product or service, are dealing with some kind of frustration or problem or issue that they need to address. And so if we are going to be authentic in meeting them where they are, we have to at, at least acknowledge and meet them where they are. And that involves 
raising the issue, acknowledging a problem, citing some concern or something that's keeping them up at night. And doing so is really an act of connection and empathy. It's not an act of manipulation. And that's a hard distinction for a lot of people to make. A lot of people feel, you know, it, it's kind of icky to sell. And it's really icky to sell when you're citing somebody's problems. But I said an important thing earlier about this, that, that we're not wallowing in it. We're not deliberately throwing fuel on fires. What we're doing is we're meeting people where they are. We're telling them, I see you and I hear you. I empathize with you. Now, let me take you by the hand and show you the other side, or let me at least uh, acknowledge that I hear where it is you want to go, and I'll show you how we're going to get there. And to, to do that, to, to understand where your prospect is and where you want to go is such a critical thing, and it's something that everyone can do. It, it doesn't take some magic or some creativity or some muse on your shoulder to draw it out. You just have to listen and look and pay attention and deliberately connect. And when you do that, you'll discover the stories. You'll discover what your prospects really want, where they want to go, what's frustrating them. And when you have all of that, storytelling is very, very easy compared to just sitting in front of a blank screen and thinking, mm, what, do, what do I write now? What, what am I going to say? Well, your prospects are going to tell you what you need to say because they're going to share with you the place they are and the place they want to be. One of the things that I'm taking from our conversation today mm -hmm. is the journey, uh, yeah. the idea that and to me, that feels uh, anybody who is uh, looking at marketing and using your services around how to how to market using storytelling, that it's it's a journey that you want to your own personal you want to take yourself through, you know, in learning how to tell a story, but also mm -hmm. in learning how to tell a story and that it's a journey that that's what I think that's one of the things that captivates people is, oh, let's go on an adventure. Let's go on a journey. And that it's not about so much in terms of sales getting to the end, which of course it is. You want to be able to connect and make your <laughs> product useful to others. But I think the relational quality and going on a journey together, like today with you, I feel like uh, you and I have gone on a little mini journey here in discovering yeah. who you are, how you got to be the way you are. And now what I'd like to do and give the audience is an opportunity, how to find you, where do, where do we connect with you? Sure. So there, there are a few different things that you can do. Um, first, go to storypowermarketing.com, all one word, storypowermarketing.com. And you can sign up for my email list there. You also can sign up for a free training that I offer called How to Harness the Magnetic Power of Storytelling to Captivate Prospects and Inspire Them to Buy. And that training is a great way to dive in and really begin to discover some of the key ideas that we've been talking about today and, and how to get started. I'm also on social media. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. And you can connect with me on Facebook, but going to the website, signing up for my emails and signing up for that free training is really uh, the best and, and easiest way to connect with me. Oh, thank you for putting together a free training. Yeah. <laughs> I think that first step is what, uh, is what people can do is just take that one step. We don't have to say you have to sign up for everything. It's just like, oh, you're going to learn so much if you just take that one step and find yourself captivated, one of your words. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Any last words you would like to give us around storytelling today? Well, the, I think that 
big idea is that it's not an act of magic. The I think a lot of people suffer from writer's block and feel intimidated by this idea of storytelling. They picture themselves or, or they literally have experienced sitting in front of a blank screen and you know, once upon a time, now what? And the beauty of it is that this can be approached systematically where you learn how to draw from your prospects what it is that they want, what it is that they need, what it is that's frustrating them. And when you do that, what we call story discovery, you build a collection of of building blocks and the act of composing a story or writing a story is really the act of assembly, taking the building blocks and putting them together in a certain structure, which is so much easier to do once you've learned how to do it than drawing from some creative magic that you fear you don't have. We all can do this in a systematic way if we discover the processes that it takes to do it. And I think that's a really important idea because the bottom line is anyone and everyone can do this. You don't have to be a creative magician. Well, those are really wonderful final and uplifting words. <laughs> and thank you so much, Tom, for being with us today. Really happy to be here. I, I enjoyed it greatly. Thanks. Thank you for being with us today for this episode of Find Your Voice, Change Your Life. Each person during interviews shares what has helped them find their voice. You can learn from these guests and find your voice so you can be confident to speak up and speak out. And remember to download Doreen's free seven-step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll return next time. Until then, goodbye for now.